you know, Zoo Tycoon has a heritage going back to 2001, where 8 million people have been playing this game on PC as a simulation game. What we have here is both an up-close running around game and a proper Zoo Tycoon simulation as of before, where we can go in, we can edit the exhibits, all that sort of thing. But you can also run around and visit them uh, in first person, which brings a real sort of richness to it. So if I go back to the start point, you'll see here we have the entrance to the zoo. We have these guys called educators going around. I've just take, chosen a default view zookeeper, but um, you can have any number of those. You can sort of edit your avatar. But you're also using as many excuses as we can to get up close with the animals, which is all very nice. So here we see a little lemur. So we can go into the zoo. You see there are all sorts of things you can go and interact with, like that lady there. You see the little parrots flying around. You can get into these zoo carts to drive around the zoo. But also, we can look at the zoo. We can play it as a, a simulation. So if we go here, we can see what the needs of this zoo are. Now, the people making the zoo were stupid here. They didn't fit any restrooms. The animals are hungry, they're dirty. <coughs> so we can change that. We can either employ zookeepers to do it, or we can do it ourselves. So, but the most important things are the animals. So if we go into the zoo, you can see here, we see some elephants. So an example here is if we want to go and wash them, clean them, we'll go up to this washing point. We can look between the different animals, skip between them, see. Oh, one guy asleep there. Little baby over there. Let's call this guy forward to be clean. Okay, as you can see, he thinks he's really dirty. So, we can improve that. He is. Oh, come on. Always the issue with demos, let's try again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's obviously there's a water sort shortage. Anyway, you can spray the animals. Sorry, it's not, it's not working at the moment. You can also feed the animals. So over here we have a feeding station. But we can also get other people to do it. So if we look at the exhibit, we can edit it and we can add things to it. So we can get things so the animals can feed themselves. So. Uh, Let's build something with this slot. So we can build things so that the animals can entertain themselves. So Now go in and watch the animals interact with that. So through this, we've got all these animals in the zoo. You can build a very, very large zoo. We go up to two square kilometers. And so we've got sort of, if you like, the game working in two parallels. The great thing with the game is also, in addition to the sort of simulation of the zoo, we've got community aspects to it, which form sort of two parts. Up to four people can build the zoos together, as we're seeing here. You can see them zooing it. We've got a, already got quite a large zoo, but we can add other things to it. So let's add a new enclosure. We can put it down. We can, other players can see this happening as well as you're building it. So if I plonk this attraction down, we can then um, adopt animals to put into that exhibit. So we've got more than 100 animals, different species you can put in there, which would build a really, really rich zoo. Some of those are unlocked through the progress of the campaign. We've got a 15 hour campaign. So if we choose, I don't know, let's put a, a giraffe in this enclosure. Now we can choose, there are different, so you've got a baby giraffe, male and female. Now all animals are brought in by helicopter, as you'll see.
Now we can then go and uh, we can see the animal we've just adopted. So uh, we can look at the animal. So go and zoom in to him. We can also see this is Caroline, what her needs are. So she's lonely, she's a bit dirty, hungry. So we could either put down a station to do this or we could adopt another animal to keep her happy. We also got various notifications to see in here about things through the zoo, so you can see how you manage them. So we can look, the animals in tropical small are hungry, we need a suitable feeding station, so we can go and do that. So as the zoo gets bigger and bigger, you can sort of automate this by putting down feeding stations. So let's go and do that. So uh, the feeding stations are what we call enrichments. Let's go and look in another slot. So let's build something here. So as you see, there are lots of different things we can build. So because it's elephants here, let's put down a fruit feeding station. Now you can have multiple animals, different types in the same enclosure, but each feeding station you'll need one for each type of animal, because a meat feeding station might not do it for an elephant, if you see what I mean. So now the animals will be able to feed themselves in that feeding station. If I go down, we can sort of watch them doing that. So if I See, look at the baby, baby elephant now coming to the feeding station. can now feed itself. Now we can also feed them using, um, using the feeding station that you saw earlier, where you actually go up and feed it, where we can either use the controller, the game works entirely with controller, or we can use Connect to do that. But remember, this is sort of, the, the game can be played at two levels. Because of the simulation level, we've still got a rich simulation here. Now we've automated that process, we can concentrate on spending the money that we've earned from that on making the zoo bigger, bringing in new animals. And then the other side to the community aspect to the zoo is that, um, you know, like a week or so in, um, in a, a park in Kenya, a rhino was shot, which is a real shame. But zoos can do something about this. They can release more animals into the wild. And so you can participate in this. If you release a virtual animal in the wild, imagine a sort of crowdsourced releasing of animals into the wild where you might have um, 10,000 such animals released. One of the fantastic things that Microsoft have done here is they have agreed that if these community challenges are satisfied by the community, they will put real money to release a real animal into the wild. So you have a load of people doing this. So let's say 10,000 virtual rhinos are released into the virtual wild you might get a real one helped due to relationships with the AZA, which is the American Zoological and Aquariums Society, or the WWF. And those relationships are in place. And I, I think it's amazing that Microsoft have managed to do that. And I hold my hat out to them. But as, as a gamer, it's something really to be proud of, that we can do something that has a real consequence, positive consequence, in the real world by playing a game. So now you see, when I plonk that exhibit down, all the trees appear, and I can go and look at it up close. Obviously, it'll have no animals in to start with. But the important thing, unlike something like Minecraft, where each bit has to be constructed part by part, we're constructing these things using default options. You can then change all the trees, change all the walls, to, to style it the way you can do it. And up to four players can build this collaboratively, which I think makes it a very rich experience where you work together, that's people on your friends list that you've allowed to do that. But you can all get achievements from it by building a zoo together, and that sort of cloud-based sharing, if you like. Uh, the other thing is, maybe I've got a male panda, and you have a female panda. I could borrow your female panda, have babies, and then to, for the zoo, or vice versa. And I think it's things like that that bring in a lot of richness to the game. I can also, not only can I run about the zoo, I can drive around in a buggy. If you want to play around, by the way, please do. Uh, left trigger to go backwards.
So the point is, we've got a very rich game that should still appeal to all the kite tycoon gamers, but also works <coughs> works very well as a sort of dip in, dip out sort of casual play, where you can sort of play with your friends. And now you can see the whole zoo come together. As I say, we can have up to four square kilometres, two by two square kilometres of zoo, which is a huge zoo in terms of the, the sheer richness of what you can build. So that's Zoo Tycoon.